Last month, I released a video talking about the astral plane, and since then I have done a ton of both research and theorizing, and I stumbled across something. Or should I say, someone. This video will have three parts. The first, we will lay out everything that is 100% confirmed to be linked to the astral plane. In the second part, we will talk about what I think could be tied to the astral plane. And then in the last part, I will combine all this information into explaining my theory about Bepi, the astral god. Big thanks to members of my Discord who helped out early on this whole discussion. But for now, let's list out everything that has a direct link either in-game or stated by MDHR themselves with the astral plane. And to do that, we should first set up where all of this is coming from because you see, Cuphead has a certain lore to it. Some might think it's not really detailed, but you would be wrong. In fact, if we whip out our copy of The Art of Cuphead, we can see it is detailed enough that at one point early development, Lucian, the NPC on Isle 4, was originally going to serve as a historian that would divulge lore about the world. But this was cut to preserve the mystery. What that lore would be, we can only speculate, but my guess is it would involve the ancient dish warriors, Rugged Ridge, and the Astral Plane. The Moldenhauer brothers also mentioned that if you look closely enough around the Equal Isles, you can see runes dotting the surrounding waters. We peppered this abstract architecture throughout Cuphead, hinting at the existence of a history for this whimsical land that stretches far into the past. So yes, there is lore and history, it's just that most of it is speculative at best. Most of it. The first real mention of the Astral Plane is from the Super Art 2, which provides invincibility. The description of this reads, cross the Astral Plane to become invulnerable for a short time. This is important to note because, well, if being in the Astral Plane makes you invulnerable in the real world, then it shouldn't be a surprise that others might crave that power. Also notice that there are stars that sparkle around your character and the ghost-like form when you use the Super. Both ghosts and stars are very important when they show up, and you can almost always assume they are tied to the astral plane in some way. Before we continue with the base game, I think it's important to head on over to the DLC island and quickly talk about the secret boss. The ghost detective at the graveyard mentions how a broken relic you can buy has potent astral energy. Getting this relic is key to unlocking the secret boss of the DLC, the Angel and the Demon. We use the relic to enter this portal. Notice the stars, and that when we enter the fight, we're in some trippy realm. Notice the background. If we head on back to Inkwell Isle 2 and enter the Genie stage, we can see this very same background show up twice. In Phase 3, when he opens the sarcophagus and starts shooting his eyes shaped like planets at us, and then in the final phase when he summons these pyramids with eyes on them to open up rifts to the astral plane that hurt us. Look at the broken relic compared to the pyramid eyes. Fairly similar, right? That's because eyes are linked to the astral plane, and there is evidence for this all over the place. Another thing to note about the secret boss is that it takes place in a graveyard. Miss Chalice is described as being caught between the astral plane and the living world. Her vast knowledge of the mystical arts is all the more plentiful for it. She has this ghost-like form, and so do Cuphead and Mugman when they use Super 2. It's safe to say that any ghost-like being is probably from the astral realm, and if we take into account the ghost train that uses its eyes as weapons, and is in a graveyard, we can assume it's tied to astral energy as well. Another major thing not many have pointed out is the tutorial for Miss Chalice, because you see if you don't have the Astro Cookie equipped when you try to enter it outside of Salt Baker's Bakery, he says, not so fast, you have to equip the Astro Cookie Charm before you can enter my magical recipe book. When you do equip the Astro Cookie Charm and proceed through the tutorial at the upper left, you can see a rift tear in the page to the astral realm itself. This is actually a pretty cool foreshadowing of how Chef Saltbaker knows about the Wonder Tart and already has some control over the Astral Realm. It's also probably where the recipe for the Astral Cookie came from. Looks like maybe Saltbaker used Acme flour in baking it, which isn't surprising considering what else Acme products have been used for. The last major Astral Plane connection we have is from one of King Dice's mini-boss minions, Mangosteen. MDHR discusses how they used art to create a link to Mangosteen's connection to the Equal Isles' ethereal astral plane. They softened the lines and saturated the colors on this background to heighten the otherworldliness. They also talk about how they placed a portal to the astral plane inside Mangosteen's mouth as a cheeky nod to the mythology of what one might find if they broke open a magic 8-ball toy. The portal is a mix of rainbow colors, and it's important to note how prominent Mangosteen's eyes are. And these are pretty much all of the hard confirmed links we have to the astral plane. So now I want to talk about what we can easily infer to be connected to the astral plane, as well as what we have to speculate for. So let's talk about Elder Kettle, because this dude just straight up hands you a battle potion that gives you magic fingers, and the ability to interact with parryable objects. Where did Elder Kettle get this potion? And are the powers tied to the astral plane? The Molden Hours describe Kettle as full of knowledge of the Inkwell Isles from his years as an adventurer. There is a lot of mystery about the life Elder Kettle led to get to this point. 
and his ability to conjure powerful potions from the ether only hints at the old man's possible powers. We have heard of the astral plane described as an ethereal place, and if we look up the definition of ethereal, we can see that it stems from the Greek word for ether. So taking that into account, I think there is a good enough amount of evidence to say that Elder Kettle has some kind of tie to the astral plane, and Cuphead and Mugman's powers come from astral energy. We can also see a sword in Kettle's house, which apparently speaks to a former hero who had adventures of his own in his youth. Calling Kettle a hero is interesting. Combine that with his age and the fact he's a dish, it's not too far of a stretch to think he might be tied to those ancient warriors on Rugged Ridge, who Miss Chalice used to be a part of at one point or another. I don't have a full theory yet on all of this, but maybe they were involved in a war over control of the Astral Plane. Give me your best theories on these dish warriors in the comments below. So, if souls, or ghosts, as many cartoons in the 30s use the term for, are tied to astral energy, that actually opens up some cool possibilities. Throughout the base game, Miss Chalice is exploring ancient mausoleums for their powers and gets captured inside a jar. You know another being that's captured inside a jar who also has astral powers? But back to the mausoleums, the second super art is literally a way to access the astral realm for a short time. And this is hidden away inside one of these ancient temples. So it's safe to assume these were placed here back in the same ancient times as the Dish Warriors. How else would Miss Chalice know where to look for these? The whole timing of Miss Chalice returning and searching for astral powers when Elder Kettle gives the boys their own powers at the same time is more than a hint that things may be happening underneath all of the main events of the game. Mausoleums are described as having a thread of the magical, mystical, and malevolent running through them. Describing the Astral Plane as malevolent further gives perspective on what exactly the reasons that Saltbaker was creating the Wonder Tart are for. Furthermore, if Crimson has the electric gadget that unlocks the crazy waking fossil boss, does that mean these characters are connected in so- Ah crap, wrong game lore. The next thing I want to talk about I've already gone into big detail over in another video, and that is Mortimer Freeze. The gist of that video is that the Snow Cult Shuffle is all about performing a ritual to help Mortimer ascend into the final snowflake form. I drew comparisons to Hilda Berg, but ended the discussion without a full grasp of what I was trying to piece together. In order to explain this next part, we all need to agree on something. The Wonder Tart requires five ingredients and a soul to be made, and the Wonder Tart gives complete control over the Astral Plane. Each of the ingredients is held by a different boss on Equal Isle 4. Pogo, why are you explaining the DLC plot? My guess is that each ingredient gives access to some kind of power over the Astral Plane. So gathering them all and combining them grants access and full control over it. Kind of like Infinity Stones, I guess, where each one has a separate power, but combining them gives all power? I don't know, I don't follow DC movies, so maybe I'm wrong on that. An example of the ingredients giving power is when Mortimer Freeze enters the final phase, he has an attack where he just enters ghost form, basically crossing the realms of the Astral Plane, kind of like Super 2 almost. You can see that when he enters this attack, the Snowflake's eyes change color and Mortimer's eyes have a crazy trippy look to them. If you haven't figured it out yet, yes, eyes are important to this theory. The connection to Hilda Berg was basically that she is all about studying celestial bodies and can transform into a moon, which doesn't look at all too dissimilar to the one in the Ice Coliseum. Her face also just kind of looks similar to the Snowflake. Also take note of how Mangosteen's background looks like a trippier version of Mortimer's Northern Lights background. Both Hilda Berg and Mortimer admire and worship the moon. Perhaps this moon is more than just a lifeless floating rock in space. That's no moon. But rather, a powerful cosmic being with great pull into astral energy. This would explain where both Mortimer and Hilda Berg's seemingly astral powers come from. Ready to get even more crazy? Cause there's another important moon to discuss. If we head on over to everyone's favorite clown fight, we can see in the background of Beppy's arena, this full moon with a face on it. The Moldenhauers explain how there's an artificiality to Beppy's lair, with desolate skylines, cut out clouds, and a moon with an indecipherable expression on it. In the foreground, signs with a mess of twisted fringing hint to an unraveling of reality. And I think that comes across very well in this art. The entire setting is eerie, and my entire theory is based around the fact that something feels off. We are sent to collect a debt from Beppy by the devil. But why exactly? What did Beppy do to deserve this? I think that Hilda, Mortimer, and Beppy all serve this moon god, and in return it grants them some kind of astral power. That's why in the final phase, when Beppy transforms into something really crazy, we can see his eyes are extremely similar to both the astral ghost in the Phantom Express, but even more importantly, Mangosteen's eyes. The moon with an indecipherable expression is facing the fight watching us the entire time, and most likely is either called upon or intervenes itself in the final phase once it sees the first parts of the fight go badly. 
Now I talked up eyes a whole bunch and you might think it was all because of Beppy's eyes in the fifth phase. But no, that's not it. So, Mangosteen can open a portal to the astral realm. And I think being able to do that at will is key to using astral power consistently. So how does Beppy access the astral plane? Nothing in the fight really implies a type of portal. That's because his way of accessing the astral realm is in another part of the carnival. A few steps from the clown's lair is Funhouse Frazzle, and this entire level hides key parts of my theory. So let's take a look again at the Broken Relic, which acts as a sort of key for Kuppa to access the astral plane. The charm is a creepy eye looking at us, and as we start doing its quest, the charm icon slowly evolves. In Funhouse Frazzle, we can see at multiple spots there is a not-so-dissimilar creepy eye watching us. And as we descend deeper into the level, we can see even more eyes, including this symbol, all the way to the exit. Throughout the run and gun are these walls that act as kind of checkpoints which you bypass by brute force one way or the other. The eye in the middle of this wall shares similarities with both fourth phase Beppy as well as Mangosteen. The entire Funhouse level, you are being watched. My guess is that Beppy uses this as his passageway to the Astral Realm, and the eyes check to make sure it's him. At the start, we can see a terrain that could represent the surface of the moon, with stars and celestial bodies around it. As we get past the first eye checkpoint, we enter a confusing maze-like area with false doors and stairs leading nowhere, and we see this painting of a sort of face with eyes and stairs leading down. Getting past that, we enter an area seemingly nowhere with a dark blue background and a rainbow road type pattern, similar to the rainbow colors that emit from the astral portal in Mangosteen's mouth. Then we hit the final checkpoint and pass through. In order to cross into the astral realm, you might need some sort of totem. I tried using the cursed relic, but no go there. Also, a cool note is that the parry cards that flip reality have hidden eyes on the back of them. So yeah, Beppy is able to cross into the Astral Realm by passing through Funhouse Frazzle to communicate with this lunar god, who might be the being depicted on this image with the eyes. Maybe in the real world, it's an astral projection of the moon, but in the actual plane, it's whatever this is. Still working on that part. I had asked earlier what exactly Beppy did to get on the devil's bad side, and my guess is it's linked to all of this. Maybe accessing astral power goes against the devil's wishes. I do think that this same moon is served by Mortimer, Hilda, and Beppy, and possibly other characters that I haven't linked it to yet. Maybe the Lunar God is what Miss Chalice and the Warriors were fighting against, trying to stop the Malevolent Bean from gaining full power over the Astral Plane. At a certain point, it does all become a list of maybes. But there is enough evidence and coincidence to make speculating fun, and the possible answers are kind of crazy to think about. Which is what is so exciting about what this DLC brings to the table. Yes, I know it could all just be answered by MDHR wanted to make a trippy level, so they added a bunch of eyes. Everything in this game can be explained in that kind of way, but where is the fun in that? Where is the imagination? At least for me, it's more fun to imagine the possible connections. So if you don't like the theories and lore discussions, why are you still watching? I think that about wraps it up for this theory. I always thought there could be more to Beppy the Clown, and with the addition of the DLC, it seems that finally might be the case. Let me know what you think of this theory. Any major holes in it? Maybe something I missed. Before we go, I have a question. Do you like bullet hell boss filled games? Do you like lore with cool implications and theories to be made? Do you like YouTubers who try to decipher this lore and try to give other people entertainment while doing it? If you said yes to all of these questions, which let's be honest, if you are a Cuphead fan, you should be saying this, then guess what? Mossbag, Resident Hollow Knight lore YouTuber, and Chad Vegemite Taster just launched a Kickstarter for a game that he's making called Titan Zero. This game is teased to contain everything that I love about games. Bosses, lore, great soundtracks, bosses, thick cowboy waifus, what? I have a huge amount of respect for Mossbag, and I have full faith in this project and what he and the other devs are trying to create. So if you're interested in this game or just supporting one of the best creators on the platform, then please go check out the Kickstarter page.